This video is proudly sponsored by Indonesia. Indonesia, providing you with 11 months of clean air a year. <coughs> Indonesia, providing you with a few months of clean air a year. Have you thanked Indonesia yet? First of all, how do we calculate 24-hour PSI? Step 1. Measure the amount of pollutants in the air. There are 6 different air pollutants that we care about. Sulfur dioxide, PM10, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, carbon monoxide, and PM2.5. So for example, on November 8th at 10am in the north, the 24-hour sulfur dioxide reading was 8 micrograms per cubic meter. In other words, over the preceding 24 hours in the north, for every cubic meter of air, there was an average of 8 micrograms of sulfur dioxide. Step 2. Convert these measurements onto a common scale that runs from 0 to 500. We call this the Pollutant Standards Index, or PSI. How do we do the conversion? It's actually damn bloody easy, as I'll explain in a moment, but if you read the NEA document, it sounds insanely complicated. They give an ugly equation accompanied by a bunch of total nonsense. Each sub-index i is calculated by using a segmental linear function that relates pollutant concentration x subscript i to sub-index value i subscript i a segmental linear function. Let me explain. There are six so-called breakpoints or cutoff points for the PSI scale. 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. As you probably know, the NEA designates below 50 as good, 50 to 100 as moderate, 100 to 200 as unhealthy, 200 to 300 as very unhealthy, and above 300 as hazardous. 500 is the maximum PSI possible. For each air pollutant, the NEA similarly designates 6 breakpoints or cutoff points. For example, for PM2.5, the cutoff points are 12 micrograms per cubic meter, 55, 150, 250, 350, and 500. These seemingly random numbers are taken from the standards used by the US Environmental Protection Agency. The conversion of PM2.5 onto the PSI scale is done so that the PM2.5 cutoff points match up precisely with the PSI cutoff points. In other words, a PM2.5 measurement of 12 micrograms per cubic meter gets converted to a PSI of 50. A PM2.5 measurement of 55 micrograms per cubic meter gets converted to a PSI of 100, and so on and so forth. And now that we have these six points, let's just join up any two neighboring points with straight lines. This red graph that we get at the end of the day tells us precisely how to convert PM2.5 measurements onto the PSI scale. For example, if the PM2.5 measurement is precisely 109 micrograms per cubic meter, then the PM2.5 PSI is 156.8. For each of the other five pollutants, the PSI conversion is done using exactly the same method except that the six cutoff points for that pollutant are different. For example, for sulfur dioxide, the cutoff points are 80, 365, 800, 1600, 2100, and 2620. Again, all we need to do is to match up the pollutant cutoff points with the PSI cutoff points, and then connect the dots. So in this case, if the sulfur dioxide measurement is precisely 109 micrograms per cubic meter, then the sulfur dioxide PSI is 79.5. The NEA reports the original pollutant measurements, and next to these measurements are the converted PSI numbers reported in parentheses. So for example, on November 8th at 10 a.m. in the north, the 24-hour sulfur dioxide measurement was 8 micrograms per cubic meter, or 5 on the PSI scale. The 24-hour PM10 measurement was 37 micrograms per cubic meter, which, when converted to the PSI scale, is coincidentally also 37, and blah, 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 blah. So altogether, we have 6 pollutant measurements, which we convert into 6 pollutant PSIs. And now for the easiest step, step 3. 
Simply take the worst of these six different pollutant PSIs, and this is your 24 hour PSI. So, for example, on November 8th at 10 a.m. in the north, the six pollutant PSIs were 5, 37, not reported, 3, 12, and 59. Of these six pollutant PSIs, the worst or the biggest was the PM2.5 PSI, which was 59. So the 24-hour PSI for the North was simply 59. Similarly, in the South, the 6 pollutant PSIs were 24, 42, not reported, 6, 10, and 67. The worst of these 6 pollutant PSIs was 67, which again happened to be the PSI for PM2.5. So the 24-hour PSI for the South was simply 67. So to recap, how do we calculate the 24-hour PSI? Step 1. Measure the 6 different pollutants. Step 2. Convert these measurements onto the PSI scale. Step 3. Take the worst of these 6 pollutant PSIs and this is your 24-hour PSI. In theory, the 24-hour PSI depends on all 6 pollutants. But in practice, it almost always depends on one thing and one thing only. The PM2.5. This is because in practice, the PM2.5 PSI is almost always the worst. And so, although in theory, the 24-hour PSI is the worst of the 6 pollutant PSIs, in practice, the PM2.5 PSI is almost always the worst, so the 24-hour PSI is almost always the PSI for the PM2.5. Don't believe? Go and check the 24-hour PSI right now, and you'll see that I'm correct. The 24-hour PSIs for the 5 different regions are simply equal to the PSIs for the 24-hour PM2.5. Similarly, the 3-hour PSI depends only on the 3-hour PM2.5. You can read more about this in the description below. Because the NEA is idiotic, we don't have any hourly PSI. But if there were an hourly PSI, it would similarly depend on one thing and one thing only, namely the hourly PM2.5. It turns out that the NEA already publishes the hourly PM2.5, so if we wanted to, we could convert these PM2.5 measurements into the PSI scale to get an hourly PSI. Indeed, as some of you probably already know, there are actually quite a few websites out there that already do precisely this. But actually, huh, Limpe got an even better idea. Since the PSI depends only on the PM2.5, why bother thinking in terms of the PSI at all? Just throw away the PSI and just think solely in terms of the PM2.5 readings. You are probably super used to thinking in terms of the PSI scale after nearly two decades of the haze, but getting used to the PM2.5 scale is really easy. Just remember that below 12 is good and above 55 is unhealthy. And for when things get really shitty, which unfortunately happens all too often, 150 is very unhealthy and 250 is hazardous. So, conclusion. Forget about the PSI. Just look at the PM2.5 and just remember, 12 good, 55 unhealthy, 150 very unhealthy, and 250 hazardous. These cutoff points for the PM2.5 correspond precisely to the cutoff points for the PSI. That's all, folks. For a more detailed explanation, see the YouTube description below. Cannot be as smoky as down here, right? Hey, still here? EconCow is a new YouTube channel on economics. Please like, subscribe, and watch my other videos. Yeah, I know, this haze video totally wrong theme. <laughs>